Wow, wow, wow. Give a big hand, okay, to all those who helped to put these things together. That's so great, so wonderful. Good afternoon, good evening, every one of you, and all you God's people say. So good to see you all, all right? Say to your neighbor, I'm blessed to be seated next to you, okay, at this worship celebration. Would you do that? All right? Uh, okay, that's great. That's wonderful. I know we are, miss, we are actually missing right now 160 of our young people, college, university students. They are away on a camp this weekend, actually, in Port Dixon. So I miss them sorely. I prayed for them yesterday and sent them off, okay, in the different buses and that kind of thing. All right, a company of a number of young working adults who are leaders with them, sharing with them, encouraging them along. Okay, so pray for them. They will encounter God in a wonderful way. Amen. Otherwise, 160 will be with us in this worship celebration normally, really. Okay, but so good to see. All right, so many of you this evening as we come to really interact and work things through together. Okay, about the things of God that is so important for all of us. I thought what happens is that this afternoon, this evening, I'm going to speak on three crucial emphasis in our journey in life to make sure we finish all the way, nicely and properly, all right, in the things of God. And that's so important for all of us. And in fact, friends, you know what? This is taken from the words of Jesus himself in Luke chapter 18, all right, reading from okay, verses 1 to verse 8, all right? Can I ask you to stand in honor of God's word to read aloud in our strongest, most robust voices together? Is it okay? Okay, in the NIV, the never incorrect version of the Bible. Uh, together, one, two, three, let's go. Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. He said, in a certain town, there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared about man. And there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with a plea, grant me justice against my adversary. For some time he refused. But finally he said to himself, even though I don't fear God or care about men, yet because his widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice, so that she won't eventually wear me out with her coming. And the Lord said, Listen to what the unjust judge says, and will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones who cried to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will see that they get justice and quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? Our Father, we give you thanks and praise, O God, for these, the words of yours is inscribed in Scripture for all of us. Our teaching, training, O God, correction, so that we may be able to grow more and more to be men and women of God, fruitful, effective in every good work in it. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for giving us this parable and important lessons we can learn to get about three crucial emphases to ensure that we finish well in life. Help us, our Father, to give insights and understanding order this evening together. In Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Amen. Will you take your seats? Friends, as we all know, things are really heating up across the whole world. And then, friends, you know, we are really moving towards the, uh, the last days, okay, of the world. And the amazing thing is, is you and I know, friends, how the world is going to end. The world outside doesn't know, but you and I know. You, you know why you and I know? Because it is there in the Word of God, the Bible. Amen. In the book of Revelation, we are told how the world is going to end, all right? And it's amazing. That's why this book, the Word of God, is the most powerful book, as I said to you before. This book starts earlier than any other book, book of Genesis, how the Word got created. Nobody was there except God himself, it says, well, no, can tell us. But not only that, friends, this book tells us how the world is going to end. Nobody knows except God himself. And all God's people say, and this is amazing, friends, so you and I don't have to be nervous, don't have to be really worried whatsoever how the world is going to end, because you and I know the answers. But friends, the thing is this, one and a half signs of Jesus. Jesus tells us about four signs before he his return. And one of the half signs, all right, when I preach through the book of Revelation, two, two, two sessions of it, Jesus gave us one of the half signs that's been fulfilled in our world today. Just only two more signs left, or two and a half more signs left. And this thing, friends, is really, really heating up very, very quickly. Okay, the, the, the one and a half signs is this. What happens? Jesus says, things around us, Things happening in the world. There will be wars and earthquakes and rumors of wars as well as famines and pestilences and we know this is all coming to pass. But Jesus also says there will be persecution that will break out. They say. And in the 20th century, more Christians have died for their faith, not for okay, the wrongs they have done, but for their faith in Christ. More Christians have died in the 20th century than all the 19th centuries put together. But the other half of the sign Jesus says is that many will fall off from the faith. 
many will follow from faith as Christians. And this way, I trust, friends, this is important for all of us. The emphasis Jesus makes to make sure we don't, okay, stumble a long way and don't finish well, okay, and sometimes even worse, all right, drop out of the faith completely like this. And so it's important, all right, following that, friends, there are two more signs Jesus says, and much of this is in the book of Revelation, the Bible tells us. So what other things you and I need to work on, focus on, the three crucial emphasis that you and I must really give our attention to to make sure we don't, Okay, stumble and fall and don't finish well in the faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. What are they, friends? First and foremost, friends, Jesus tells us about the whole area of faithfulness in prayer. Why? Because Luke chapter 18, verse 1 itself says, Jesus told his disciples a parable to show that they should always pray and not give up. Always pray and never ever give up. We find, friends, Apostle Paul writes the same to us like this in Romans 12. And in verse 12, Paul says, Be joyful in hope. Patient in affliction, but also faithfully in prayer. Faithfully pressing on in our prayer life. That is so critical and crucial. And friends, faithfulness in prayer is shown by our whole area of our trust and dependence upon God. When we are faithful in our prayer, it shows our trust, shows our dependence upon God. And you and I are God's people. We are always people who need to kind of trust and depend upon God in all things in life. And all God's people say. But friends, that's where the danger is. The danger is this, when things are going well, this is where we need to guard, not when things are not going well. Why? Because when things are not going well in our lives, we cry to God like crazy, isn't it? We plead, we beg, okay, we spend time in fasting and prayer and call upon God for mercy, for grace, and we all know that. But friends, you know, when things are good, when things are going well, when we are prospering, God tells us this, all right, Deuteronomy chapter 8, okay, verses 10 to 14, as God warns his people when they came out from Egypt before entering the promised land, God already warned them beforehand. And friends, you know, 4,000 years later, or almost 4,000 years, the same thing applies for all of us. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 10 to 14, where God says to his people, when you have eaten and are satisfied, praise the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. Be careful you don't forget the Lord your God failing to observe his commands, his laws, his decrees that I'm giving you this day. Sorry. Otherwise, when you eat and are satisfied, when you build fine houses and settle down, and when your herds and flocks grow large and your silver and gold increase and all you have is multiplied, then your heart will become proud and you'll forget the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt out of the land of slavery. Why is it we'll forget? And this is what it is. Verses 17 and 18. All right, the same chapter. You may say to yourself, my power and the strength of my hands have produced this wealth for me. But remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth and so confirms his covenant when he sought to your forefathers, okay, as it is today. You see, friends, many times when we are doing what, if we're not careful, not that it will definitely happen, if we're not careful, we tend to think, my cleverness, my brilliance, my ability, all right, has brought me this kind of success, all right, this kind, okay, of uh, fortune and everything else. And that's the reason why very often people are successful and wealthy. They see no need for God. Why do I need God for? I've done it all by myself. I've done it my way, as it were, friends, in Nashua. I don't need God at all. And sometimes, you know what? Some rich, successful, wealthy people say, if God comes into my life, He may catch out me. He may disturb me. So what do I need this God for? I've done it by myself. Did it my way. Friends, you know, we as Christians can also fall into the same trap. Why? Because when we are well and successful and that kind of thing, what can happen to us? If we're not careful, slowly, slowly, we begin to pray less and less. We begin to show less and less trust and dependence upon God because I've achieved it by myself. My ability, my, my gifts, my expertise, my brilliance and everything else, friends. So, friends, it's an important reminder. And the Bible tells us three and a half thousand years ago, God says, to watch out, as God has said to all of us this evening, all God's people say. So important, isn't it? The second thing about faithfulness in prayer, all right, is one where it reveals our desire for God and the depth of our relationship with Him. Prayer will show our heart for Him but also it will show the depth of our relationship, how rich we are in terms of our walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? And that's important for all of us. You know what happens sometimes? Some people say, Pastor, I don't pray anymore. Why is that? You know what some people say? I find God so far away. God so distant. So distant. 
if we find God far away or distant, what is the problem and where is the problem? And the question is this, who has moved? Who has moved? God is always the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen? He has never moved. He never changes. It is we who have moved. It is we who have fallen away and sliding away, sometimes without our realizing. So, friends, the problem is never with God. It is with us, isn't it? And this is where, friends, okay, our prayer life will show our heart, our hunger for God, as well as the depth of our relationship. And the amazing thing for all of us as God's people is this. You and I as God's people, we are given the privilege to be able to talk to God anytime, anywhere, isn't it? Who on earth has this opportunity, this privilege to be connect with Him just anytime, any moment, anywhere? Is it? And just in the midst of this pandemic, many non-Christians that are lost because they don't know who to turn to, especially when you're shut in. Okay, don't know who to talk to, isn't it? But friends, you and I as God's people, we know better, isn't it? That is God Almighty always there for us, with us, in us, and around us. We can talk to our friends. What a privilege. What a joy. What a blessing, isn't it? Okay? And so, friends, you know, it reveals our trust, dependence upon Him, but also shows, friends, really in the whole area of our hunger for Him, on top of that, the whole area, friends, of our depth of relationship. But there's one more thing it shows to us, friends, about faithfulness in prayer. And the amazing thing is this, that you and I can pray together. Isn't it? There is a power of corporate prayer, as we all know. And Jesus tells us like this in Matthew chapter 18 and in verse 9. Again, I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything you ask for, it will be done for you, my, my Father in heaven. Isn't it amazing, friends? It knows when we get together, what happens, right? The power of agreement is the place, okay, of God's revelation of His mercy, His goodness, okay, and His blessings upon us. Eh? The place of agreement is a place of God's power. Listen, how many of us, we pray like crazy as Malaysia is moving into general elections number 14. Can I see your hands? How many of us, we pray like crazy, isn't it? Many of us took part, for example, on May the 8th, the day before polling day 2018, we all gathered to get here in UMC to pray, right? Isn't it? And some of us went pray to the night to the next morning, you see. And uh, thank God, Doris and I, that weekend, we're not traveling. So I was so pleased to hear about this May the 8th prayer meeting. So I told Doris, come, let's go. Okay, uh, 10 o'clock, right, in Hall 4, you were jam-packed with people. As we walked in, Pastor Chris M came out to you, Pastor Daniel, thank God you're here. Can you speak or not? And friends, you know, I tell people, we must always in UMC be ready for three Ps ready to pray, to preach, and to perish. Hello? Isn't it? Right? I say, sure, I'm happy, happy to do that. But, you know, just last, the Sunday before, May the 6th, actually, of 2018, I was speaking in Singapore. I was actually preaching in St. Andrew's Cathedral. Okay? And there, in the three services, halfway to my sermon, I stopped. Okay? And I said, I want to speak to those of you who are Malaysians here. And there are many Malaysians in Singapore. Amen? There's in fact half a million Malaysians in Singapore right now. And some 150, 200,000 commute to work in Singapore every day, friends. Okay, that's a commitment, right? Because why? They need the money to support themselves and their families. Isn't it? So halfway to my summer, I stopped. I said, I want to speak to Malaysians who are here. Could you, right, please, on May the 9th, return to Malaysia and vote? Right? If not, drive back on May the 8th night, vote next morning and come back home. I'm sure your bosses will allow you to at least take half a day off. If not, let me know. I'm going to talk to your bosses. Amen. He said, please, for goodness sake, perform your national duty and win every single vote. And that's why, friends, you know, voting in Malaysia is very exciting. Oh. Amen. Isn't it? Pastor Gilbert is telling about his wife. By the way, his wife is Japanese, so she's in Japan, not on a holiday, to help to take care of the parents there. Right there. Isn't it? And, Yuki tells me, Pastor, wow, elections, okay, Malaysia, very exciting. You can see all the energy, passion, everybody move up and down. People even fly back from overseas. In Japan, eh, nobody bothers about Jeff. So, Malaysians, okay, friends, you and I are privileged by God. Of all the countries in the world, elections in Malaysia is the most exciting. And you don't look very excited. Yeah, really. I mean, where do you hear, for example, Malaysians around the world collect, okay, their postal ballots and somebody will fly home, order the Malaysia to deliver the best postal uh, ballots. Eh? Unheard of. And friends, you know, this is what it is for you and I to understand. We get to pray on May the 8th and not just UMC. Churches across the country, can I say, on, all right, 
Many around the world prayed for all of us, you know, our brother Anand and our sister Claire, okay, in Manchester, prayed like crazy for all of us. Lord, do something in Malaysia. And you and I know, God has heard our prayers, isn't it? All right, God has really heard our prayers of His people in Malaysia around the whole world. And we thank God for that. You know, some people say, they Pastor Daniel, you know, see, in spite of all the praying, what for? In the last three years, we've got three prime ministers. And never in the whole world can this record be broken. Three years, three prime ministers. So how? Still got hope or not? How many of you think there's still hope in Malaysia? Can I see your hands? Well, how many of you think no hope? Don't put up your hands. So we, we need to pray for you. But friends, you know, why is it like that? And people's past what for pray now. Look and see. All right? It's just going down the drain. Friends, can I say, this is where all the more so we must keep on praying. Hello, are you there? We must never assume because of some victories we have achieved, we can now sit back, relax, or let our guards down. Never, never. And reminded from Jesus, we must always pray and never give up. And all God's people say, okay, that's important for all of us. Isn't it? And so friends, you know, the first emphasis Jesus is making to all of us in our life as we move on to finish and by God's grace finish what is to keep on being faithful in prayer. Never ever give up whatsoever. Amen. The second emphasis that Jesus makes for us all right, is fervency the task, not only faithful in prayer, but fervent in the task that God has given to us. Like, for example, this woman that Jesus tells us about, this widow herself, verses 2 to 5 of Luke chapter 18, right? It says here, he said, in a certain town, there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared about men. And there was a widow in the town who kept coming to him with a plea, grant me justice against my adversary. For some time he refused. But finally, he said to himself, even though I don't fear God or care about man, yet because his widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually wear me out with her coming. How appropriate, friends, this woman is in this task, in this mission she wants to fulfill. She refuses to give up. She goes on and on, battering the judge until justice is done for her. And rightly so like this. And friends, you and I know, we need to pray for our apex court rights now. Amen? Our federal court right now. Okay? You and I need to really pray, whereby all kinds of pressure is put upon the federal court right now, all right? The case that is going on, isn't it? That there seems to be, okay, a quiet move behind the scenes to undermine justice. And this God of ours is a God of justice and righteousness, all God's people say. And that's what we need to pray. And never give up whatsoever. Isn't it? But friends, you know what? In this fervency of the task of this woman, it reminds us, first and foremost, friends, you and I must be fervent in what we are occupied with. Whatever we are occupied with, whatever God has entrusted to us, or whatever we feel we are committed to, we must continue to be fervent all the time in giving ourselves to serve. Isn't it? And this way, friends, can I say, I want to commend all the cell leaders, assistant cell leaders together with your spouses, for those of you who are married. I want to commend the many ministry heads. I was going to commend friends, you know what? Our children, church teachers, helpers, and every one of them. And many of us serving in different ministries, including the food bank. Some of these come during daytime, help pack and distribute this food to the poor and needy okay, across the Clang Valley and beyond as well. Faithfully doing it from week to week. There are many of you who are serving, all right, and being occupied with your task. I want to commend you. And church can ask you, give them a clap offering to Jesus because of their faith and faithfulness. So say, because just in the last three weeks, Doris, and we visited three cell groups in person. And I've been asking people, hey, meet that in person. I will come and visit your cell group. Isn't it? I'm tired of Zoom, Zoom, Zoom. How many of you are Zoomed out? Can I see your hands? Okay, isn't it? Right? Because meeting together face to face is a different dynamic at work, and that's so important. It's for all of you because you and I, we are body of Christ, and as a body, it needs relationship, it needs related to one another, isn't it? And when we meet, God is there. Where two or three are gathered, there am I in the midst, Jesus tells us, isn't it? And so therefore, step in and enjoy ourselves. Likewise, coming here in worship together as a people of God is a real full expression of what it means to be the body of Christ, is there for all of us. And so friends, you know what? Let's be fervent in the task to make sure that we are fully giving ourselves to serve. But more than that, friends, can I say, and some of you serve out there in the marketplace, serve out there in whatever things. Well done, I want to say to all of you. But the second thing that is important is also fervent to serve all the way to the end. Right? Not just fervently serving, but all the way to the end. And that's how Apostle Paul writes to us in Romans 12 and verse 11 like this. 
Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Never be lacking in zeal. Keep the fervor of ours in serving, right? All the way to the end. And that's very important, friends, can I say. So important for all of us. I got sometimes, not often, sometimes, cell leaders who come up to me, Pastor Daniel, I've been serving the last 20, 25 years. Chukopla, you know. I want to resign and hand it on. I said, I commend you for these years of faithful service. I really want to honor you and thank God for you. But can I plead with you not to resign and give up? You've been serving 20, 25 years. Well done. But don't give up. So, you know, sometimes I'll say to them, put a little bit of gentle pressure. Okay, just gentle pressure. I said, I've been serving here in Jewish for the last 42 years. Yours, 20, 20, 42 years. I have not slowed down. In fact, I've increased pressure upon myself. Hello? You're not convinced. Never mind. God have mercy upon all of you. I think I work harder now than when I was senior pastor. I can preach as many as 25 times a month. All right? And I meet all kinds of people through the week as well. Friends, you know, serving is a joy and serving is a privilege and all God's people say. And whilst we have the energy to serve, let's go all out. It's not because of me. It's because of the Lord. Amen? And that's why I teach, for example, when I speak to senior citizens, our Golden Club, for example, I teach them from Psalm 92 verse 14. Write it down. Psalm 92 verse 14. Where it says here, You shall be fruitful in your old age and still stay fresh and green. You shall be fruitful in your old age and still stay fresh and green. How many of us, okay, want to stay fresh and green? Can I see your hands? Wow, clever people. How many of you also want to be fruitful in your old age? See your hands. Not so many hands now. Never mind. God have mercy upon us. Yeah, I teach people, really, how we can still be fruitful all the way to the end. Don't step back. Don't retire. You may hand on leadership to younger people, but run with them. Amen? Run with them. Pour your life into them. Your experience, your knowledge, your wisdom, your gifts, and whatever else, friends. And cheer them along and mentor them as well. They're so important, isn't it? So that nothing is wasted in the kingdom of God. Amen? God doesn't give us all this wisdom, insights, understanding for nothing. Friends, He doesn't want to give us this and let a part of our life, we locked it up, throw the key away, and we come to a church only every Sunday. This is never the plan of God. Amen? We can be fruitful all the way to the end. And that's so important. So that, friends, you know what? One day, Jesus will say to all of us, Well done, good and faithful servants. Come and enter into the joy of my living. That will be the most wonderful experience and the greatest welcome. Amen. It's so, so important for all of us. So not only, friends, fervent in occupying ourselves fully in whatever we're giving ourselves to. Secondly, fervent in serving all the way to the end. But also, friends, you know, thirdly, fervent to share in the task of the gospel always. All right? And this is our part of the Lord's Prayer that Jesus teaches us to pray, that we pray uh, regularly. It's in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 10. Here we pray. All right? Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Isn't it? All right? We pray your kingdom come. We want God's kingdom to come on earth as much as it is in heaven. Isn't it? That should be our heart's desire for God's kingdom to come on earth, meaning, friends, God's rule, Jesus' rule in our hearts to come on earth. How can Jesus' rule come into our life, come into our hearts, until we submit to the Lord Jesus Christ? Amen? Until we come to faith in Christ. And when we surrender, submit our life to Christ, then God's kingdom has come in a person's life. Isn't it? And that's why, friends, as I said, we must seize every opportunity to share Jesus with as many people as possible, whoever, wherever, isn't it? In fact, just last month, Doria and I were in Rome, actually, and I was speaking to a gathering of senior pastors of mega churches from around the world, including top business leaders from around the world. All right? I shared my thoughts, challenged them, okay, in different things of the Lord and ministries and so and so forth. Then after that, we decided to take a side trip to give ourselves a break for a holiday. Can you give a break or not? Can or not? Wow, oh, you're all so kind. God bless you all. Okay. And so we took a side trip to the Tuscany area. Never been myself before. Okay. And went around and enjoyed ourselves. All right. We got into the bus. I introduced myself to the bus driver. What's your name? Emmanuel. Good to meet you, Emmanuel. Italian bus driver. Okay. Who could hardly talk English. So I got someone to help me translate. I said, I'm a, I'm a pastor, okay, from Malaysia. Emmanuel, you're very special. Out of 8 billion people, of course, send a pastor sit in your, in your bus. You must be so, so special indeed. Connect him all to the trip, the five days there. At the end of the trip, I said, Emmanuel, 
it is no accident I'm in your bus and enjoy your wonderful bus driving all these last five days. Maybe it's about time to trust in Jesus as Lord and say, is it okay? You know, he said, is it okay, Ken? But not just that, also pray for my son. Oh, a clever man also wants a prayer for a son. Sure, it is my joy. Let him the faith in Christ and thank God. Okay, the, one of the assistant tour, tour uh, directors in our trip, she f- came from Ukraine originally, worked in Italy for the last so many years, speaks perfect Italian. Okay, I say, come, 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 help me. All right, as I speak to him in English, you help me translate Italian, explain everything and how to come to faith in Christ. Friends, you know, it was my greater joy on that day to lead him to trust Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Amen. And his name is Emmanuel. Imagine, you can have a better name than Emmanuel. Amen. So great name for your son, by the way, okay? Uh, if, if one of your sons is coming along the way like this. Eh? Friends, you know, you and I want to bring God's kingdom wherever God puts us in. It's, and it's so important because some of these people you meet, you will never see them again on earth. Emmanuel that I meet, I will probably never see him again. But the greater joy it is, you and I will see him in heaven, okay? And one day in heaven, can I introduce my friend Emmanuel to you all? Uh, is it okay? All right, you'll be delighted to shake his hands, all right? He is tall, okay, bright and handsome, all right? Emmanuel, fervent in the tongue. So friends, you know what? You and I as God's people must be faithful in our prayer, fervent in the task. But finally, friends, faith in commitment. Why is that? Because that's how Jesus puts it for us like this at the end of verse 8, second of verse 8, okay? However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? Will Jesus find faith on earth? Meaning what? Will Jesus still find faith in every one of us in trusting him? Will you, you and I still faithfully walk with Jesus all the way to the end? So important, isn't it? In other words, what does it mean? It means, friends, you and I, really, very, very importantly, must have unshakable faith in God no matter what happens. Whatever happens to us in our life, hold on to Him all the way to the end. What are some of the challenges that can shake our faith? Honestly, what are some of the challenges? Let me list down three. There are many others, but three main ones that can challenge our faith commitment. What are they? The first one, friends, is to do with facing difficulties, obstacles in life. When we're faced, all right, with obstacles, with problems in our life. It could be, for example, problems in relationship, relationship at home, relationship with our loved ones, relationship with our son, with our daughter, whatever. Isn't it? Just last weekend, I was preaching in Clang Wesley and to see this wonderful, well-accomplished man with a wife coming up to me and say, Pastor, actually, have we met you before in Beijing when you came to speak in Beijing? All right, can you pray for our son, 18-year-old? He's just walking away from the Lord. All right, you can see the pain on the parent's heart. Sure, it would be my joy, delight to pray for your son to come back to the Lord again. Right? Because sometimes as they go through, young people go through their life, their minds are more infused by the things of the world than the things of God. And they're more influenced by their friends rather than the word of God. And friends, you and I need to help them in journey with them like this. Sometimes including us as adults. You know, sometimes we face with uh, uh, problems at work. And problem after problem at work, we get so angry and frustrated. And some of us, we might not have come from good family backgrounds, isn't it? How many of us sometimes, our family background is challenging? Can I see? A bit of dysfunction in a family. Can I see your hands? How many of you? Oh, thank God. My hand is also up, by the way. I came from a very poor family. So much so that after A-levels, I could not go further to university. I had to work for four years almost. Not to save money for my education, to support the family. And more than that, friends, when I was all through secondary school, I had to work. In fact, all of us, brothers and sisters, got to work to contribute towards, okay, the support of the family. All right? But you know what? I'm so grateful for the background I came from. Never angry and bitter. You know, we can be very angry. But why, why is it like this? It is just unfair. Of honesty for me, looking back, I'm so grateful. Because it teaches me about hard work. It teaches me about honest work. It teaches me how to rally together as a fan and don't give in and don't give up and just walk away like that. I wasn't a Christian at the time. People were all not Christians. But today I'm so grateful, friends. Things that happen to us in our life, especially bad things, 10% is about what has happened. 90% of what to do is to do with the, our response to what has happened. We can respond in anger and bitterness and hate out of everybody, sometimes even at God. Or we can respond to say, I don't understand everything. But Lord, I want to trust you. 
I still want to trust, believe you're a good God. You see everything from beginning to end. For me, as a human being, I'm limited, I'm finite in my perception, in, okay, in my sight. But you see everything beginning to end. So I want to trust you in spite of that and still carry on faithfully in doing all that is needful, isn't it? And that's so important for all of us. So it's a choice we all make. It's, an, it's, it's very important for all of us in this regard. And so, friends, you know, when we are faced with difficulties and challenges and problems, don't throw in the towel uh, just like that, and don't we just walk out. It is a tragedy when we do that, okay? But not only that, friends, you know, secondly, when we are hurt or betrayed by some Christians, isn't it? Like just two weeks ago, met up with this young, not young man anymore, he's in his uh, late 30s, almost 40 years old now, don't know, he, don't know him at all, but he wrote in a card to want to see me. I said, fine, I make a point. All right, time to see him. All right, I said, tell me a bit more firstly about you. Well, I, I said, I asked, by the way, are you a Christian? Sort of. I got sort of Christian. I said, what do you mean? Well, when I was young, my parents brought me us uh, to church, okay, and my parents go to the Methodist church here nearby, that kind of thing, but oh, after so many years now, all right, uh, no, no, I'm not interested. In I said, what? And then he, he told me this. There's so much hypocrites in the church. I said, beg your pardon. Not true. Some hypocrites, a few hypocrites, all the good ones you have not met, and they are all found in UMC. <laughs> Amen. You see, some people, because of a few bad ones, they conclude everyone all like that. I have to correct him. My friend, not true. You know, your experience is really... So narrow, all right? Isn't it? All right? Because you have experience with a few bad ones, you write off everything. Or sometimes hurt by Christians. Another con- one is betrayed or betrayed by Christians. Okay, or see hypocrisy in Christians. And the one has been hurt by Christians. Isn't it? Forget about it, not interested. All right? And just, we just want to walk out like that. Friends, can I teach you how to disarm these people? Is it okay? You want to learn or not? How to disarm these people? Like, give you a real example. I think about two months or three months ago, I went to, okay, here to our cafe. Maybe a, a, a closer example, okay, maybe just, okay, just this, uh, this Thursday. I took my food, okay, and I walked around, okay. Now, usually some of you who are here, often at lunch and you notice me, I always walk around first, okay, before I get my food. People say, Pastor, why you keep on walking around one? I say, very simple. I pray from table to table, you know, no, I don't walk around for free. Okay, I maximize my time. So I do prayer walk, okay, every lunchtime, okay, in our concourse area for, for food. So I walk from table to table. You know why I pray for them? And some of these, many of these are unfamiliar to me. You know why I know? Because they never smile, never wave to me. Oh, people say, aren't you heartache? You built Dream Center, nobody waves to you. I say, I like that. If everybody waves to me, I'm in trouble because it means everyone's a Christian. Hello? So I like people who don't know, don't understand me, and don't know me at all. So I grab after that. Okay, after I walk around, I look. Ha I saw a table there. Okay, fine, fine, great. Especially if you go alone, you look for a table with one person. Uh, hello. And so I grab my food. I walk towards this table. I saw church members around. I don't want to sit with them. Okay, friends, please forgive me. No, I'm not friendly towards you. Okay, I want to join people I don't recognize. Okay, right now. So I saw this guy. I said, "Excuse me, can I join you? Because you are lonely. I'm lonely. Let's make friends, lah." Uh. Yeah, he was shocked. Who is this stranger coming? And you know, nice uniform, German motors here, just two doors away, here repairing uh, BMWs and Mercedes Benz. And you send me, it just so happened. Now, really, I wore this t shirt. Really, you know, it so happened I wear the t shirt with Mercedes Benz. So he said to me, You own Mercedes Benz? Huh? I said, In my dream, yes. I said, No, I. I mean, people own Mercedes Benz, I think not snap. So sorry, sorry. Forgive me, those who own Mercedes Benz. I said, what do you spend that kind of money? Bring that thing in, it's a few thousand dollars repair, isn't it? I said, you own or not? You yeah, no, no, I don't, of course not. You and I are smart, we don't own. Amen. <laughs> so then I said, hey, by the way, what's your name, Derek? Good to meet you, Derek. Okay, actually inviting me here. Are you here, Derek? Please forgive me, so sharing okay, our conversation. I say, okay, uh, Derek, okay, by the way, actually. Uh, you know this church? Yeah, I know. Have you been coming? I've come here many times. Oh, really? Uh, by the way, I'm a pastor of the church here. Oh, really? Uh, okay, by the way, Derek, are you a Christian? He's just, nah, not interested. You know, just like that. No, not interested. I say, okay, sorry, Derek. All right, so let me teach you now how to disarm these people. Is it okay? 
I said, Derek, you know, I'm so sorry. What I said upset you. Uh, always, friends, start with apology. Amen? When you start apology on the right track. Amen? I said, I'm so sorry, Derek. What I said seemingly upset you. Okay? The next step, step two now. Derek, by the way, help me to understand. By the way, it's not your problem, it's my problem. Friends, you know, put it as your problem, not your, my problem. Why is it when I mention Christian faith, you get unhappy? Amen? You saying, help me to understand, it's my problem, not your problem. All right, you're okay, but I'm not okay. Help me understand, okay? Why you just, like that brush, I'm not interested. Any reason why, usually, they see hypocrisy in Christians, or they've been hurt by Christians. Amen? Sometimes it could be, friends, you know, your own father. The moment you talk Christian, they <laughs> very angry. Then do the same thing, lah. Hey, Dad, I'm so sorry what I say upset you. But then, you know, secondly, you know, help me to understand. Not your problem, my problem. Why is it, no? Right? You get so upset when I mention that. Help me to understand. And usually, your dad, your loved one, your friend, whoever say, huh, Christians are hypocrites. Oh, no, you know, Christians have played me out, betrayed me, bluffed me, cheated me. Say to them, not everybody, lah. Some, maybe a few. Amen, isn't it? But there are many good ones you have not met. Many. If you come to Dias Island, a few thousand people to introduce you. Amen. Isn't it? All right. So, Derek, don't jump to conclusion and write off like that. You know what I said to him after that? Derek, you know, if you throw this out, in case this is true, you're going to lose everything. Amen. You just throw it out of that without having think, thought through, considered it. You just throw it out. You know, if this is true, you're going to lose everything. But Dad, you know what? I can tell you. I've got experience to tell you. I came from Buddhist background. I was searching for the meaning of life. I struggled with the purpose of living. Who am I? Where am I going? And out of that loneliness, emptiness, I became a Christian. That changed my life completely. Dad, you know, think about it, consider it. You know, at the end of the conversation, his attitude changed after that. Totally changed after that. Became very open to talk. And then ask him further. By the way, you got other members. Of, yeah, I got a brother. Uh, it's a brother Chris. Yeah, my brother is a Chris. He goes to church down in KL. I said, how come you don't go me in different stories? Uh, Derek, you know what? Invite your brother to come here, and you yourself also come now. You know, friends, he was open after that. No longer, eh, not interested. Friends, you know, take one step at a time. Amen. All right. So sometimes the problem is with us because why we have hurt other people. We, we have been not been consistent the way we live our lives. Amen. And so therefore, friends, you know what? You and I ask for forgiveness. So sorry. Some of these have hurt you. Some of these have betrayed you. So sorry. Please forgive us, us all. You know what? Can you introduce some good ones? And the good ones around. Amen. What a sin is. But there is a third reason why. You know, what happens is that our faith commitment can be challenged. You and I as Christians, I'm talking about, I'm not from non christians You and I as Christians, our faith commitment can be challenged. What is the third reason? The third reason is this. We become disappointed, even angry with God. How can that happen? That can happen, friends, when we pray legitimate prayers, like praying for our son who is seriously sick. And we pray, 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 pray like crazy. And our son is not even healed. He died eventually. Have you come across people who have, because of that, walked out on God? Have you come across? I heard so many stories. You know, I said to them, if you turn away from God, who do you turn to? Who do you turn to? You only in the process only get your own wisdom and worldly wisdom and friend's wisdom that will not go very far. You and I need divine wisdom. Amen. You and I need the help of God. You will turn away. Who do you turn to? And I say to them, you know, you get come only with one way and the one way you spiral downwards. And I say to this young man that I met two weeks ago, you walk out on God, there's only one way you spiral downwards. But I believe, you know, my friend, God has been good towards you. God has blessed you. God has protected you. You know, when I say that, yeah, yeah, Pastor, it's true, it's true. So look, 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 my accident wounds and all the scars all over. Uh, God has protected me. Yeah, you see, God protected you. You still behave like that. Doesn't make sense, isn't it? Right now. Or some people, okay? And so, therefore, this is like that, friends. All right? Because our perspective is so narrow. We only see so far, and that's all. God sees everything beginning to end. We may not fully understand everything, but we trust Him who is faithful, who never changes. And all God's people say, isn't it, that one day in heaven we will know. 
one day in heaven, I guarantee you, we will know why things are like that, isn't it? It's like Job. Perfect example is Job, isn't it? Uh, what happens is disaster after disaster in modern terms, it is stocks and shares all wiped out. It's all his animals, everything all wiped out. More than that, friends, all his ten children just got wiped out just in one day. So everything gone. What happens? The Bible tells us in Job chapter 1 at the end, Job did not okay, give up on God. Job still maintained his integrity. Whatever God has given, he's got a right to take away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That's what Job says. He still praises God. How could it be? When you're lost, how can you still praise God? You know what happens? In chapter 2, now we all know where the disaster came from. Job doesn't know, actually. If you read chapters 1 and 2, Job doesn't know. But you and I know what, because we read in from the outside. You and I know, friends, you know, the attack came from Satan himself, isn't it? That God gave Satan the opportunity to hit, on, okay, hit at us. Job, provided you don't take his life. Job doesn't know. Friends, you know, and yet he doesn't pack out and give up and walk out on God. And you know, when it came to chapter 2, Satan was still not happy. All right? You have still kept and protected him because God said to Satan again, Have you considered my servant? Okay, Job, in spite of your attack, he still maintained his integrity. Satan said, Bluff. Satan tries to call a bluff. Let me do it again, second time. God says, Okay, you may do it, provided you don't take his life. And as we all know, Satan came and attacked and created all kinds of sores in his body. And Job, highly respected, distinguished man, was sitting in one corner with a broken pottery, scraping himself as a pathetic figure. And then even Mrs. Job, you know what she said to Mr. Job? Curse God and die la. Hello? Thank God. But don't say what Job said, you foolish woman. Don't say that, okay? There'll be no dinner for you this evening. Shall we accept only good from God and not bad? But this bad. It's from Satan, not from God. Amen. So we don't fully understand everything. Hold on to Him. Trust Him. Press on faithfully. All right? Never give up. Because if you turn away, who do you turn to? It will only be one way, downwards. And you know what? Some people turn away from God. Eventually, they came back. But tragically, they came back 30 years later. And you know what? 30 good years of your life is all gone. When you can serve God, when you can be a blessing, encourage and inspiration to other people, other people, you're just throwing it down the drain like that because you walked out. So friends, never do that. Amen. Things happen to us, we will never fully understand because we're finite in our mind. We'll never see everything begin to end. God does. Trust Him. He's still a good God. Amen. But when these kind of things happen, sometimes we've got doubts. Isn't it? Sometimes, well, friends, when we grow up, the older we grow, the more questions we have. One final example. Just this last Monday, met up with this family. All right, husband and wife, we attend UMC faithfully all these years and see the two boys grow up here in UMC. Literally. I went before our eyes. Two very smart kids, especially the younger one. Okay. And I'm so glad because I told him, every time you're back on holidays, I want to meet with you, spend time with you. Very, very smart. You know what? When he was in Form 5, he represented Malaysia in world debates. He's one of the three who represent Malaysia in world debates, hosted by Yale University. And it's a global debate. Okay. And what happens is the new team, he is, to, he is today three years older now uh, because he's finished his A-levels, finished off his first year in the of Toronto, moving on to second year, going back to, okay, for his second year. Brilliant guy. And now, you know what? He is training this new team of Malaysians, spend one week with them, help them to polish in the thinking, in the strategies, in the communication, diction, and everything else. And this time, Malaysia turned out to be number two in the world. Brilliant guy. He wrote in for his internship in the last two and a half months. Ben Nagar on his own just wrote in. Ben Nagar accepted him just like that. With no connections, no introduction whatsoever. That shows how good it is. In fact, right now he's in Cambridge University doing a course there, a one-week course in Cambridge. Brilliant guy. And he says to me, as he grows up, I connect with him. He's got a, a more questions, more doubts about the Christian faith. Just more and more. And, you know, at lunch, okay, on Monday, he says to me, Pastor Daniel, everything must be tested by science. All right, unless it lines up with science. No, 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 thank you very much. I say, really, my friend? Really? Can I tell you this? Science can only answer the what and the how. Hear me carefully. Science can only answer the what and the how. What is this and how did it come about? But science, my friend, cannot answer the why. Why is this like that? 
Why is, okay, issues like that? You say, why is it? We, we have to we just be like animals, just exist. I said, my friend, you know what? We are more than animals. Why? Because you and I have been smart people. We are not satisfied with just existing. We want to know why we are living. Amen. We want to know why we are here. You're a smart guy. You've debated people around the world. And so surely you want to understand the purpose, okay, of why you are here, what you're designed for, and what you should be doing, isn't it? The whys. You know, friends, he stopped. Suddenly, boom, light came on. So I said, Dad, Jonathan, the why is a question of philosophy. The what and the how is a question of science. And don't try to make science answer the question of philosophy. It will never, ever indeed. And that's important. That's why, friends, you know, when Stephen, okay, Hawking commented on the issue of the why about creation, the philosophy department at Cambridge University mocked and laughed at him and told, okay, Professor Stephen Hawking, you have gone beyond the boundary and wandering into the boundary of philosophy that you have no authority to speak on. And friends, you know, at the end, I say, what do you think? And if you'd like to, I want to lead you to make a recommendment to Christ. You know, friends, at the end, he said, okay, pastor, my joy privilege, he was number 14 this year and led to faith in Christ one and one. Friends, you know, let's answer people's issues and questions and struggles in life and help people, but also help ourselves to make sure that we be faithful in prayer all the way to the end that we will be, you and I, fervent in whatever task occupied with all the way to the end. But third and final, friends, let's keep our faith commitment all the way to the end so that none of us will miss the boat when Jesus comes back one day. Amen. And then, together, friends, as God's people, you and I will really, all right, be finishing our life well. And then when Jesus comes, He will say to all of us, Welcome, you good and faithful servants. Come and enjoy my kingdom forever and ever. And friends, you know what? One final thing. When we bring people faith in Christ, when people come to faith in Christ, we will see them in heaven one day. Why? Because they're part of God's family, God's big family. If they don't come to faith in Christ, you will never see them. And that's how much, however much we love our family members and loved ones, however much we love them, if they don't know Christ, it's all over and they die. And that's why we must go all out to love them to share with them and pray for God's divine mercy and grace to touch them, to open the blind eyes to receive the truth that is in Jesus Christ. Whereas Christian faith is based on evidence, not just belief, not just take a leap of faith, it's based on evidence. And the only faith that is based on evidence is a Christian faith. And that's the reason why, friends, you know, today in Britain, more people come to faith in Christ amongst lawyers because lawyers demand evidence. More come to faith than any other profession. So friends, no time for me to take you through. The evidence of the Christian faith that comes to undoubtedly as the truth of Jesus. And that's how I led one to faith in Christ just last Wednesday. Number 15 in my list, therefore. Friends, you know, it is my privilege and joy. Let's go all out to make a difference so that indeed God's kingdom will come on earth as much as in heaven. And this will be our family that we're going to rejoice and celebrate in forever and ever as the people of God. And all God's people say, come, let us pray. With our heads bowed and our eyes closed. Maybe there's some of us here who have not known Jesus Christ as Lord and Saviour. Or those of you watching online, maybe you're not taking the step of faith to trust in Christ as Lord and Saviour. My friend, I want to urge you, encourage you, both online as well as in person here in this worship celebration. If you're not, today's the day. Now is the time, the Bible says, of salvation. So if you're not, you like to. And I guarantee you, when you take the step of faith to trust in Christ as Lord and Saviour, you're in for the right of your life. Not that there'll be no problems. Jesus never guaranteed there'll be no problems. There may be problems, but He will stretch us. He will give us grace. We will end up becoming a better person if you respond correctly and not a bitter person. So if you'd like to, would you follow up to in your heart? Write this prayer as I lead you to trust in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Acknowledge you're a sinner. Believe that Jesus Christ died and will prosper your sins. Thirdly, ask Him to forgive your sins. And fourthly, invite Him to life as Lord and Savior. When you take a simple step of faith, your amazing journey begins with Jesus Christ. And I pray by God's grace forever and ever. Let us pray.
So those who like to follow after me in heart this prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, I thank and praise you for your love for me. I want to acknowledge that I'm a sinner. I believe you died on the cross for my sins. Please forgive me of my sins and come into my life and be my Lord and my Savior. Take control of my life. Fill me with the Holy Spirit and your power. Enable me to live as a Christian from today onwards. Give me your love, your peace, and your joy. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Holy Spirit, seal it deep in every heart, every life. Let's pray this prayer right now. Oh God, I pray, whether in person here, in Dream Center, online, wherever they are. Seal it and bring it deep and make this, oh God, new birth and new life to pass. Enable this, Father, I pray, to be discipled, oh God, to be followed in the life of DMC, so that we learn and grow in you and become faithful, oh God, followers of Jesus. In turn, we'll reach out and share Jesus with as many people as possible. And so, Lord Jesus, I pray that you help all of us. All right, in this journey of faith, Lord Jesus, we thank and praise you for this three crucial emphasis you are making to us in order that we make sure we all finish well. To always be faithful in prayer, to be fervent in our task, and all the way to the end. But also, Lord Jesus, to keep faith all the way to the end. Help each one of us, Father, I pray. Renew us, strengthen us, encourage us for those of us who are going to challenging times. Minister to us, Father, I pray, even right now. Thank and praise you, Father, in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Shall we stand to sing a closing song? And as we stand, I just sense as I, as I close in the prayer just now, that some of us are going to challenging times. Some of us are going to confusing, confusing times. Some of us are really stretched. Some of us wonder, Lord, are you there? Are you really there? Would you come? We're going to pray for you. Some of us have health challenges. Would you come as well? All right? You're praying and crying to God for a loved one, whoever they may be. A legitimate prayer. And as it were, God doesn't seem to come through. Would you come as whatever it may be, friends? Or come and stand on behalf of someone. We've got doubts. We've got issues in their lives. Would you come and pray for them for breakthrough? Or some of them really have carnality in their life. There's so much a person of the flesh, even calling himself herself a Christian. Would you come and stand up behind? We're going to pray for that. It's okay. So very quickly, up in the gallery, come downstairs here as well. Others will you come as well. All right. As the worship team leads us uh, in a closing song, come as quickly as possible, friends. Would you do that? Thank you, Lord. I have because of Jesus all this promise, one for me. Yes, friends, this place is open. Uh, we are a family, a family of God. So just come, any one of you. Uh, we're going to pray for it. Release God's grace upon your life, God's strength, God's mercies, and God's love. Would you come? Just as many of you, friends. Maybe some will go health issues. Come, we'll pray for you. All right. Work issues, relationship issues, whatever it may be, friends. Will you come here to pray for you and release God's grace upon your life? So yet to come to faith in Christ, right? Some of us are burdened about our parents. As I said, when we come to faith in Christ, we shall be a family of God forever. If they don't come to faith in Christ, all right, the honesty of Scripture is that it's all over. Our life on earth is all over. But when we're in Christ, it will be forever, friends. So some of you whose loved ones have yet to come to faith in Christ, your parents, your grandparents, sometimes your own child or, or your own children, come and stand up behind. We're going to pray for you. 
for God's mercies and grace to take place. Is it okay? All right. I want to close in prayer. All right. But those who just come, uh, we're going to pray for you. Okay. Uh, one final thing I want to say is that those who prayed the prayer about trusting in Jesus just now, uh, those who prayed the prayer and trusting in Jesus, okay, can you come and make yourself known if you pray here in a auditorium in this celebration? Come and make yourself known to one of the pastors, leaders. We want to really help you to grow in Christ. But for those, those of you who are watching online, if you pray this prayer sincerely and this all-knowing God, or He will seal it in your heart if you pray this. Contact the church, right? Connect with us, okay? Uh, because we really want to help you to grow in Christ. And that's what is important. Help you to incorporate the life of the church as well as the life of the cell group that is so important for all of us. Okay? And so, those of you who think the prayer, you will come as I close in prayer. So, so, we all raise our hands to God. Our Father, we thank and praise you that you are such a wonderful, good God towards all of us. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for giving us insights and understanding about life and living and how you long for all of us to finish well. And you've given us three crucial, important emphases in life about the need always to pray and never give up, about the need to be fervent in whatever task, and not only fervent in whatever task, but fervent all the way to the end, never lacking in zeal, keeping the spiritual fervor serving you. But Lord Jesus, you remind us finally that when you come, will you find faith on earth? Lord, I pray for everyone who's standing here, including those of us watching online. And wherever, oh God, this message will go around Malaysia, around the world, I pray for all of us, Father, that we'll keep faith and faithfulness all the way to the end. That there are things sometimes we don't understand. We want to trust you. We want to still walk with you. We don't want, oh God, in any way whatsoever to walk away from you or walk out on you. It is you who is our hope, our help, and our future. So I pray, Lord God, that you help everyone as Lord Jesus, that truly will be fine faithful when you return one day. And they will say to all of us, O oh, you good and faithful servants, come and enter into the joy of my living. May this be our experience and all our joy one day, Lord Jesus, I pray. And now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and evermore through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. God bless you all, church. Have a great weekend, great week ahead. Okay, see you next weekend. God bless you all, richly. Again, those who need prayer, you come. All right, those who pray, sinners pray, you contact the church, help us to follow you up. Okay.